Hey everyone, and we are back <laughs> with another, uh, with more of this Unity MOBA RTS uh, stuff. So I'm just going to be continuing to um, make more, make more progress on this MOBA thing. Um, so anyway, uh, when we left off last time, we had the ability to click, and uh, and the character would go to wherever you clicked and, uh, and all that is great and you can also hit K and then activate keyboard controls like WSAD um, and you can use spacebar to jump and you do have a double jump so that's what we got so far camera will follow us and, uh, and that's all good so control P I'm gonna stop that play from playing <clears throat> and um, first thing I'm gonna work on tonight is um, getting the character to rotate. Uh, so right now, um, one thing for sure that you're going to want to do whenever you're working with characters is make sure that uh, your your geometry isn't your top level where all your stuff is happening on. Um, because if you need to swap that geometry out or if you need to change geometry or if your geometry needs to be scaled or whatever, you're going to have to scale your top group that has all your scripts running on it. and um, that can just cause complications later down the road. You, you know, you're gonna always have to be factoring in that scale or that offset or that position or whatever. So um, one thing that that I've seen typically is uh, to create an empty game object, so something nice and chill. We'll call this hero, and we'll call our current hero hero geo. Okay, so then. Um, I'm gonna yeah, that's all zeroed out. That's great. Our hero, we can zero it out also. And then I'm going to drag that right in there. So I'm just gonna drag the geo into the hero group. Now obviously all of our stuff is living on our hero, but we can change that really easily. So um, first things first, let's take our rigid body and just copy the component and paste it here. Paste component is new, excellent. And then we can delete it from here, remove. Let's take uh, this one also and copy component and paste to here. Uh, paste component is new, excellent. And let's get rid of it there. Remove component. And finally our script movement, let's do the same thing there, copy and paste. Okay, so now we got all that stuff. Um, let's get rid of our script movement here, remove component. Now this is going to break some of our stuff, our script stuff, because our script was initially looking for um, the rigid body that was sitting right on top of, or right on our character. Um, oh, actually, no, we're moving our rigid body up here. But we will also want to take our capsule collider and move it over there too. So let's copy that and paste that here. Now, <clears throat> I, I, I'm assuming that the order does have something to do with it, but I only ever use it for organizational stuff. Like I always have the colliders at the top and etc. Um, it probably makes a difference. It probably has something to do with something, but you know, whatever. Um, all right, so now we can see what's going on here. We've got our our capsule and our collider um, on two separate things. So if I scoot this back up again, so that it kind of feels like we had it before, our and if I click on my hero, now our collider isn't of the same like position. So that's trouble. So let's zero this out again. And what we can just, inc you know, we can bump our, our dude up to the top there. And now you can see our geometry is matching our collider position. Oops, that yeah, you can see right there. And, uh, and that should all work out just great. So if I hit play again, this should all work just as it did before, which is perfect. Uh, the only thing that's gonna be different now <clears throat> is now I can totally change this geo so I can be like I want this thing to be on its side and now when I run it you'll see what's happening our collider is still the main thing that's interacting with the scene and the floor and all that stuff and that still has the same shape as before but my geo now inside I can do whatever I want with it and still you know I can be um, interacting with the scene just fine so that's that's the real big benefit of changing those things. 
Um, now I can add a bunch of extra geometry. I can add all sorts of other things to this scene and uh, or to this group. And uh, our character is going to move beautifully with it. So let's just reset those rotations, zero it all out. All right, so here's what I want to do. Because we're using a, a capsule collider, or a capsule rather, it's really hard to tell what direction he's facing. And because we're going to be working on some stuff where the dude is facing a direction, um, I am just going to really easily scale him in one direction. Well, I don't know if that's really going to be that visible. OK, plan B. <laughs> Um, I'm going to make a, basically a gun, uh, cause this guy's going to have a gun and he's going to shoot. So we'll go to game object, 3d cylinder. All right. And let's zero this out. Actually, here's a nice trick. Um, if you drag it into your, the group that you're going to be going into, you see that it picks up the, um, transform information to offset it back to where its original or its position would, would be before I moved into the group. So if I zero it out after I've moved it into the group, it snaps to the zero position of our group. Uh, so that's super handy. So I'm just going to rotate this down uh, 90 degrees like that. And then I'm going to scale it. Oops. I'm going to scale it way smaller. And then stretch it kind of out. And then, you know, one of these kinds of things. So it kind of looks more like this dude's holding a little gun. Oh, you know, here's this is actually our perspective here. All right, and uh, it's, I don't know, it's more like a bazooka than a gun, but that's okay. You get the picture. I'm going to be holding it, holding it kind of low, more like a Gatling gun. Nice. So we'll name our cylinder uh, gun. Uh, actually, we'll do a gun geo. Because I could just swap this geo out for any other any other geo. Something I make in a 3D package like Maya or something uh, uh, something that I make in here or whatever. All right, cool. So now we've got this, and you'll see what's going on is uh, as I'm moving around the screen, he's not actually looking at where we're moving to. So that's lame. Let's fix that. So I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna go back to our movement script over here like we were using yesterday. And I am going to start adding in some trigonometry stuff so that uh, he can be looking in the right direction. Now, going about this, here, we'll just uh, throw a comment in here so it's a little cleaner. Movement on, oh, there's that B again. Movement on screen. And here we'll have rotation on screen. Okay. So, um,. So there's, there's a few ways that we can adjust this. Now there's the, the look at function, which is a, it's a pretty helpful function. Um, it would probably work fine for what we're doing here, but I just want to have more control. Um, and so I want to use the, I want to use some, some trig stuff, but the look at function just to essentially points you at the direction that you need to be pointing at. Um, so I can actually do a quick example. Uh, transform dot rotation equals um, vector three dot look at. I think this is right. Hang on. Uh, vector three dot look at, and what we need to look at is a um, a target. So we'll do um, our move to, which is not, which is a vector three. I think it needs a transform. Hold on, let me just, uh, let me just check this out really quickly. Look at unity. This is how I do everything. <laughs> transform that look at, look at target and then the vector. And it is a transform that it needs, okay. And we don't need all this transform dot rotation. We just do. We could just do a transform dot look at. But we need a uh, an actual transform. So um, what I can do is create a new piece of geometry. So we'll do a three D object and we'll make it a sphere. Cool. And this will be our target. 
loke or something like that. And we'll just zero this out. And I'm going to turn off the collider because we don't actually want to collide with anything on this guy. And we're going to make it nice and small. It's just going to be a little dot. And this is going to be attached to our our looking at position. Um, so this is this is definitely one way to go about it. Okay, so uh, let's make a placeholder for our look at sphere. So we'll do var um, target loc, which will be a transform. Cool. And uh, just gonna hit save real fast. Take this target look, and we'll see now in our hero in our script movement. We should get a new thing pop up in a minute. Oh, oops. Transform. Hmm. What's going on? Saying line 70. Oh, did I? Oh, whoops. Haha. <laughs> Let's just turn that off real fast. Okay. So now if we go back in here, hit hero. And there's our new target lock. And we'll just drag in that transform of this new sphere. Okay, so now every time our we get a, a move to hit point, I'm going to attach our um, target loc dot position equals move to. So um, the position, which is our vector three component of our target locator uh, transform, is going to match the vector three of our move two, which is coming from our hit position, our hit point that we click on the ground. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> so if I just save this real fast, you're gonna see this thing in action. <clears throat> so if I click over here, you can see it moves our little indicator over there. Oh, and here's another thing too. If I click and hold, it doesn't continually update um, any of this stuff. It just clicks it. It just does it once, which is fine. But uh, I want it to continually update, so I'm going to change this input get mouse button down to just input get mouse button. Down is uh, something that acts only once, like in the initial click, and then it's not called anymore until you click again. But if you just have input get mouse button, it'll just run. It'll just keep going over and over again. So now, if I click and hold, you'll see this is updating, and his position of where he's running to is updating as well. So it's a good way to like follow my mouse as long as I'm clicking. All right, and then he'll stop as he gets really close to it. And the reason he's not stopping on it is because I've got that proximity, that uh, that check sphere. And oh, actually, just a square length. Yeah, that's right. I, I switch it to a distance based. So it's because my square length um, is less than point or two point zero. I can reduce that value and then get him closer and closer to that uh, ending point. So I just to show you guys really fast. If we go, say zero point five. Oops. Zero point five. Now he's not going to stop moving until he's only point five units away from that thing so it, we basically it looks like he's just walking right on top of it which is what we want okay so uh, now that we have a little like indicator of where we're moving to uh, let's just turn on this transform dot look at and uh, we'll just look at our target look which is a transform as well and we'll see what happens okay He's yep, he's doing that right now. He's just chilling. He's loving it. Okay. <laughs> so you can see kind of the problem with this is it's doing it's doing exactly what it should be doing. But the problem is um, it is moving like it is now trying to look at the object on the z-axis. You can see it in here in the top view. It's trying to look at that object wherever it is, and uh, because it's on the ground, it's looking down into the ground. So we can fix this. Um, we can fix this up here by adjusting our target location position move to to be looking at um, 
a different like a different y height a y height that matches our current target locator y height or, or rather a hero's y height so our hero when he drops down to the ground he's at a point about 0.5 roughly so here's what we're going to do um, transform dot target look and instead we're going to input a vector 3 and we're going to do target look dot x oh wait this is uh, dot position dot x right and then we're going to do uh, transform dot position dot y and target look dot position dot z so what we're doing here is saying okay instead of giving you the xyz values from that target look we're going to give you the x and z values from the target locator and then the y value we want to match our current y value target so this should give us it should solve that problem at least and whoops I must have misspelled something here on 71 position po oh postion postion position okay it's a little bit better than postion okay so now we hit play and there we go so he's always looking up and that's great the only problem is he's facing the wrong direction so that's no good um, alright so we have a few ways to solve this so we could either we could either just have him go the wrong direction and then do a negative one on these two target position X and Y so let's just try that. If we just do negative target position and negative x. Uh, OK, thank you. And now we should get, yeah. So now he's facing the right direction, but it's getting a little wongo because we're doing this weird negative thing. So let's not do that. Um, again here I'm gonna show you why I prefer to have things in a little group like this because check this out I'm just gonna rotate these 180 and uh, you know what I'm not gonna do it that way because my pivots all weird <laughs> so rotate that guy 180 and rotate this 180 actually I don't even need to, I don't even need to rotate these what am I doing all I need to do is basically just move this gun so that this is our front position now. And just like that. Now, oops. Wait, what's going on? Oh, I forgot to save. There we go. Forgot to save my script. Sorry. Now. He's facing right at the uh, at the thing, and he'll get to his destination, and he'll stop. So this is the easiest way to do this, but it does kind of limit us a little bit. You know, um, well, you can see clearly, like right off the bat, he doesn't he doesn't rotate around to his position. He just sort of snaps to it, snaps to looking at wherever he's going to. So there's no like rotation transition, but you know that that's kind of okay. Um, we could definitely work with that. But I'm going to show you guys another way really fast before I get too carried away with this uh, transform look at. Um, another way to do this, which I think is is cooler and it's more elegant and it, it's going to provide a lot more control and you're going to be able to do this really well on 2D projects as well as 3D projects. Um, and that's just to, to calculate all that stuff ourselves. So um, we're going to have a new variable up here called uh, destination or just dest for short which is going to be a vector 3 and let's go back down here and here's what we're gonna do is our destination or sorry dest is going to equal our new little target location thing that we just made so target look dot position 
<clears throat> okay. So our dest y now is going to take in our camera dot main dot transform dot oops transform dot position. Um, hold on, just let me make this Unity 3D JavaScript. Cool. At least we got that camera turned blue. <laughs> Something. Um, dot z. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, minus our transform dot position. Dot y. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, hold on. Let me finish out writing this, and then I'll explain it. So, our destination x is going to be our destination dot x minus our transform dot position dot x, and our destination z is going to be our destination z minus a transform dot position dot z. Okay. So what we're doing here is just uh, taking each one of our, our angles. Like it makes more sense if you look at these two. Um, destination X is going to be taking our current destination X position, which is our target location position, and subtracting it from our current, our actual hero's current position. And then it's throwing that value back into destination X. <clears throat> so then it goes through again, and then destination X gets its new, you know, its uh, target position again. And then it subtracts the dis difference between the x uh, of our hero and the x of our position again, and then gives us puts us that into destination. And why we keep on filling our destination with that value again, uh, I'll show you. I could have had a different variable for this. Like this could have been instead of destination, it could have been you know final destination or something. And so we would have destination that's constantly updating, and then final destination would be pulling in the stuff. But we're just sort of replacing the value because it's going to be replaced again. Uh, every time the frame updates, so it it's kind of like uh, it's just sort of a little a little more efficient this way. And then this destination y, um, I'm just taking the camera's position and subtracting it from our y position of our um, character of our hero, and that's basically just locking our y position and where it currently stands. So wherever that dis that relationship is, that's not going to be changing. So that's not going to be updating. All right, so moving along here, um, we'll make a new variable called angle. So I'm just go up real fast to make that. So this will be var angle, which is a float, and we'll just give it a starting value of zero. And we'll do this rotation stuff. Okay. So our angle is going to do this thing called. Uh, mathf.attan2 and we're going to be taking our destination z and our destination x. So it's really important that z is first and x is second um, because what this is actually doing is mathf is just a way of calling up the math functions inside of uh, Unity. Attan2 is is kind of like that, uh, that old stuff you learn in trig which is um, Hang on, let me pull up this little thing here. So this is an incredible, incredibly great resource that I just found uh, a few weeks ago and have reread about six trillion times. Um, and he, he explains in great detail what, what's going on here, what we're trying to do, you know, how we're refining the angle that we're looking for. Um, and he talks about, you know, using math in reverse to all to, to figure this out. So this is what I would highly recommend everybody go through and just read over and over again. It's Ray Wenderlich, Wen Wenderlich, Wenderlich, I'm not sure, but it's called uh, Trigonometry for Game Programming, part one, and there's a part two, which is amazing. Um, okay, so yeah, that, that uh, TAN2 is just basically doing some crazy math function to um, take our, our new destination, which is the difference between our current position and our old position, and creating a radian uh, rotation out of it. Then we can't really work with radians inside. I mean, we can, but it's easier to work with degrees. So we're just going to use this other function that's called uh, <clears throat> mathf.rad2deg. 
which basically just converts our radians to degrees. So that's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> well, it's not really, but trust in it because it works. <laughs> so we'll do uh, transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot Euler. Euler. Can't believe in all the tutorials I've watched, nobody's ever done that. I had to do it today. <clears throat> um, so what we're doing here is taking our transform, our transform node and then our rotation, which doesn't accept regular old vector three kind of awesome easiness like uh, position or like it shows up in here. <clears throat> um, so it's a little bit more complicated. And then it's loading in this quaternion dot Euler. And a quaternion is a crazy, super complex way of doing rotations. It it's crazy. I don't even. I don't even understand it. I barely understand it. I just know that it's the, it's the, the class I need in order to access rotation-based stuff. Um, Euler is just a way of saying uh, this is our going to be our new rotation angle, <clears throat> and um, then I can toss in a vector three, which is nice and simple. So I don't want any rotation change on my x or z. I just want the rotation change on my angle, and the reason I'm doing a negative angle. Um, is is because I'm not sure yet. Let me see if I can actually just do it with a regular angle. So I'm going to hit save. And what we should get now are no errors, hopefully. Great. And now this dude is rotating, but he's rotating backwards. So you see what's going on here? As I rotate to the left, he turns to the right. As I rotate to the left, or to the right, he turns to the left. So that's that's Wonko Town. And that's why I threw that negative angle in there because I was like, this isn't right. But this now should be right. So yeah, now he's at least rotating the right way, but he's he's carrying more of a bat now than a gun. So here's another thing we can try. So he's he's 90 degrees off the rotation that I want him to be on. So I can just do uh I can just do times negative 90. Okay, and now. Whoa. I mean, that is just wickedly awesome and wrong. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Because that wasn't right. I want to do a, a minus 90. Because uh, <laughs> that makes way more sense. Okay, well that is right, but I want to go plus 90. Okay, so that, I mean, that's just, you know, just kind of fiddle with that until he's facing the right direction and he's doing what you want him to do. So you'll see, though, the issue with this is uh, as soon as he gets close to the thing, well, he didn't do it that time. But, yeah, you can see he's always snapping back because he's like, oh, we're, we're on top of it. That's perfect. So this is kind of why I left this little threshold uh, a little bit further away. So this is going to force him to kind of always be pointing at what we want to be pointing at, which is that end spot. And that really isn't working either. OK, so here's what we want to do instead. So we can still leave this at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. But let's see, I want. I want him to stop rotating if he's not moving. So let's do that. Let's just put all this rotation stuff inside of the move controller. Because after all, we are indeed moving. So let's put it here. Cool. And I'm going to hit play. Oops. I'm going to hit play again. Yeah. And now he moves until he's not. Dang it, he's still doing it. All right, so he's snapping to do his final position. OK, let's do this. So that return is just a quick and easy way of exiting the loop, but he's still doing it. Darn it. 
Moving should be false before we have that problem. So yeah, this is where things start to get like annoying because you're like, wait, come on. Let's not do that anymore. I want it to work. Um, all right, you know what? Just for the sake of moving forward, because I don't have a ton of time tonight, I'm just going to uh, go back to the look at. Transform that look at. Ta da! <laughs> it's so useful. Um, all right, and then we'll just pull it right out of there. And we don't need that return anymore. Let's drop it right there. Okay. So that's that. Now we got our, our dude looking at the right spot. And he stays looking at the right spot when he reaches his destination. All right, cool. Um, so that's working. Next, I wanted to add in uh, some bullets. Okay, yeah, let's make some bullets. That'll be fun. So we'll make him shoot. Um, yeah, what are we? What is he going to be shooting now? Okay, for now we'll just make it so when you hit right click, he's going to shoot. Um, just for the sake of of tonight. Okay, so uh, scripts creates uh, JavaScript script. Um, we'll call it shoot <laughs> script shoot it's, you know it's, it's pretty descriptive um, I'm just gonna drag it right on top of my hero double click it and let's start making a script that shoots so going down here shoots things um, all right so we'll have a projectile that we'll need Hold on one second. <laughs> um, so we'll have a projectile. And uh, we'll pull in just a transform. And then um, we're going to have a shoot speed um wanted like how fast he can shoot uh for now we'll just we'll just make it he can shoot as fast as he can click but we'll eventually limit that um so there's our projectile um what else will we need because the speed is going to be handled on projectile okay we'll do uh um variable for starting location and this will be another transform okay so let's save that real quick and let's make a projectile which is just going to be a sphere we'll make it really small and let's take a look at this thing Okay, that'd be a tiny little projectile. And then let's just give it a material so it doesn't look like everything else. So we'll make a new material called uh, bullet. And it's going to be red. And I can just drag it right on top of that bullet. And now we've got a little red bullet. And we'll call this thing uh, projectile. Okay. So here's what we want to do is I want to instantiate a bunch of these projectiles. So I'm going to make a prefab out of this by just going down here to projectile and just dragging my projectile into the prefabs folder. And you see now it creates a little prefab, um, which is just a little group. And you can see that the name of this now turned blue. So I'm going to delete it from the scene because now I can just drag as many as I want out from the, from the thing. So same thing here, I'm going to make my hero a prefab as well. I'm just going to drag the entire thing into the prefabs folder. And now that I've got him in here and I've got a projectile that's a prefab, <clears throat> I can make the projectile, um, I can just drag it into the prefab of the hero. And now the hero is going to have that projectile attached. And it's coming from the library instead of from something in the scene. 
So I can instantiate as many of those as I like. And uh, secondly, I'm going to make a empty game object inside of here. So we'll do create empty. And uh, I'm going to drag it into our hero. And this is going to be our um, bullet start loc, bu uh, bullet starting location. And we'll zero all that stuff out. And then I'm going to actually attach it to the end of our blasting rod over here. So, and it's just an invisible, it's like a null, you know, just an invisible transform that I can use. So it'll be about right there. Let's just kind of get it into place. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So that is going to be our bullet starting location. And I can just drag this right into starting loc. Excellent. And then I'm just going to hit apply up here. And because now we've already got this thing as a prefab, if I just hit apply, it's going to update that prefab and put our bullet starting location thing in there. And it's going to, you know, have that attached by default. So now I can actually drag out as many of these heroes as I want. And this is always fun. So if we have two of these guys or, you know, 12 of these guys, now when I hit play, oh well, <laughs> um, so that's that's probably not that's not working. Why is that not working? It's fine for one. Oh, I uh, wait. Actually, I don't know why. Well, whatever. It's not like we're gonna be actually making two guys anyway. But what is the problem though? target loc of script movement has not been assigned so my hero one target loc oh that's why because our target loc is uh, assigned here so I haven't made a prefab of this so it's not picking that up so here I can fix that really fast I just take my target loc drag it into prefabs and then in here I can say the target loc is my um, my thing no, I don't want to do that. That's no good because it's going to be with the target loc inside of the uh, thing in here, inside of the pre the project. I want it to actually look for this specific target locator. So instead, I'll just do hero. And if I make a few of these guys, I just need to simply connect this. That was the issue. So connect that one too. Hero three and connect that one there. So now I can I can move these guys all over the place. Because eventually this game is going to have a handful of characters. And so you can see they all, on their own, will move towards my little point here. And they're kind of doing a little dance. They will eventually get closer and closer. They do have rigid bodies on, so you can see that they, they are colliding with each other naturally. But you notice I did turn off the rigid body collider on the... Um, or did I? On the gun? No, I didn't. Actually, it's still in. But yeah, so they start st stacking on top of each other when they can't actually get to the location. But anyway, um, I digress. That is not what we're trying to do at all. <laughs> so uh, let's get this target locator or this bullet working. Okay, so we've got a bullet, we've got a projectile, everything's working. So here's what we're going to do. If input dot get mouse button down is one, which is our right click, and if projectile, so as long as we've got a projectile, um, instantiate projectile at transform.position and uh, quater uh, actually we'll just do transform.rotation. So what, I, what I'm doing here is I'm instantiating. So I'm creating a new projectile, which is that sphere that we've thrown in there. Um, at the position of our current, our current position, of our character, our hero, because this is what the script is attached to, and our 
current rotation that our hero is um, facing. So really simple. So what it's going to do is it's going to put a projectile right there every time I right click. So I'm just going to right click and I put the projectile right there. Now, of course, what's happening is weird because um, it's putting the projectile right in the center of our hero. And then our hero is interacting with that with physics. So he's trying to be like, well, I'm supposed to be on top of this little dot, but I can't because there's this stupid bullet in the way. Here, it'll make more sense if I, if I show you right here. So you can see this bullet now is preventing our guy from actually standing on top of this thing. So this, this is wrong. This is not what we want to do. So first thing I can do is just turn off uh, my collider for the bullet because we're not going to need that. We're going to use a, a distance-based technology or whatever, coding, scripting, whatever, in order to, to get that thing. So hold on a second. And um, so now you can just see right off the bat, I can hit right click and it's no longer It's not like you're interfering with us. Now, obviously, these bullets aren't really doing anything. They're just kind of sitting there. So that's weird. I mean, I can I can make some pretty cool dot matrix art. That's actually kind of fun. There's a game in there somewhere. There's a game in that. Um, <laughs> anyway, what we want is to have the bullet start at the tip of the gun and then fire off in the direction that we were facing. So let's change that up a little bit. So go to target location, uh, or rather, we'll go in here. So our starting location is what we actually want to be instantiating this from. So instead of transform.position, we'll do starting loc.position. And I'll just replace both those. And now we can see that it does indeed start at the tip of the gun. OK, next. We need to make sure that that bullet shoots forward. So in my experience, I found that it's easier to attach a script to the bullet to make it move forward than to try to force it to move forward you know, via script from the main character or from the gun or anything like that. So I'm just going to do create uh, JavaScript. And this is going to be script bullet. OK, and we can drag this right on top of our projectile here. And I'm going to open that script up. It's going to say script for the bullet movements. Speed is going to be a float. And we're going to put it at uh, 5. And that might be all we need. And oops, on update, it's going to say transform that position. Uh, equals vector three dot move towards um, actually instead we're just going to do vector three dot forward <clears throat> time speed times time dot delta time. So that's, remember that time that delta time is just important to make sure that the speed is is the same on every computer, despite the uh, computer speed, like how fast that computer is or how slow that computer is. So that's that transform that forward speed times delta speed, and we'll just see what happens. So what I'm what I'm doing here is saying uh, vector three dot forward is the same thing as writing vector three. Um, one zero zero so one in the x and zero in the y and z and i'm just going to be multiplying that one zero zero by the speed by five so it's going to be five zero zero um times the do, times that delta time so this is like a super small value that's usually like 0 0.1 0.05 or something so really it's going to be moving on every frame uh like 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 units to the plus x in the one. <laughs> so, oh, it's complicated. Um, but here, if I if I just hit play, 
We should be able to see a bullet now. Just acting really weird. So it's putting them all right here at the same spot. Oh, pfft, duh. Plus equals vector three, four, and speed. There we go. Otherwise, I was just forcing it to be at a specific spot, but I want to keep on adding that number. So there we go. Bullets are now moving directly up, and uh, that's something we want at all. They're not even respecting our local position. So instead of forward, we'll try right, which is uh, 0, 0, 001 instead of 100. Zero, zero. And now at least they're moving to the right, but we want them to move in the direction that they're actually firing from. So let me think. I want to get, oops, sorry about that. I don't want to get around this. So um, we need self space. So if you just bear with me for just one second, I'm going to pull up this thing again. Um, oh, darn. <laughs> Did that, didn't I? Um, I'm looking up some of my scripts I created a little while ago for a different game just because I want to I wanna do this right the first time and not lead you guys down 10 rabbit holes until I finally until I finally had something. Uh, but I can tell right now that uh, this is how I'm going to do it. So instead of this, I'll just save that so you guys have a, at least a, a reference of where we've come from. Transform.position equals vector three dot move towards and we're going to do uh, transform dot position and um, I don't really want a target because I don't really have a target I just wanted to move space dot self hmm yeah I don't want to do a move towards I want I want translate. Transform dot translates. Yeah, I think this is the one. Hold on. Let me pull up my script reference here. Because it's so helpful. Translate. So we should get some transform dot translate stuff. This is great. And I think here, yeah. So here I've got my relative too. So this is what we want. Transform.translate. I'm going to be translating vector 3.forward. And we want to be doing it uh, oh, times speed times oops times time dot delta time dot delta time. Great. And um, we can do space dot self so that means it's a local space instead of world space so it's depending upon the rotation that's already existing on that thing so otherwise it's the same as what we had here target position but within this translate I can specify whether it's a world space or or a self space so this should work save that hit play and now there we go they're shooting in the direction that we're moving. And because we're moving at the same speed that he's shooting, um, you don't really, <laughs> it doesn't look that great. So I'll change my speed up here to 10. Oops. And that is not going to update because it's annoying. Um, speed. I think there's a thing that like allows you to revert it to the prefab value. Oh, our prefab value is, that is our prefab value. So we'll do speed at 10. And I'm gonna hit save really quickly. And here we go. Now you can see he's running and he's shooting and those bullets are just gonna be traveling literally for eternity. 
so you can see in here my outliner every time I I create a new bullet every time I shoot it's creating more clones and those clones are never gonna die so what that means is if I zoom way out I just select all these guys they're still actually like traveling there we can kinda see them I don't know if you guys can see them on this on the stream but there they go it's like a flock of ducks um, so that that's obviously not good we we're gonna wanna kill them off at some point so we can kill them off in a few different ways as well um, the easiest is as soon as they're off the screen just kill them but uh, that takes some some math that I don't want to figure out right now because I have to leave really soon so uh, a quicker way to do it is just to have them die off after a timer so we'll make a new timer their timer float equals zero and we'll do this timer plus equals time dot delta time so that's just a, it's clicking up if timer is greater than let's just give it five seconds five destroy game object so it's just going to destroy this whole game object that the script is attached to which is our bullet Oop, I thought so game object has to be lowercase okay so now if we get back in here and I start shooting these bullets after five seconds, they destroy themselves. So that's that's plenty of space. So if I was way over on one side of the map, and I shot to the other side of the map, I don't think I'd ever actually see these things. Yeah, see, they get off frame before before they they die off. So five seconds is totally. It's probably a, a little bit too much, but I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. You never want to actually see. Yeah, it's definitely too much. But that's okay. We'll do four. Four seconds sounds better. Um, all right, so that's how you can do that, solve that bullet thing. Um, and uh, let's see. Well, so if we want to actually hit something. Okay, let's make a really quick little dummy here. So we'll go to create. Oops, not copy. 3D object and create a um, cube. So it's going to be roundies versus squaries. That's going to be our game. If you're a squarey, you're the enemy. If you're a roundy, you're good to go. No, we'll just make it. We'll make a pillar here. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I'm going to tag this. I'm going to add a new tag and call it enemy. And tag enemy, good deal. So, oh, you know what? Instead of a tag, it's more important that I have a layer that's enemy. Because I'm going to do a layer mask <clears throat> to filter out our, our enemies. Okay, so now on our projectile, we're going to add a few other pieces of, um, of intelligence to it. Ah, oh, forgive me. So this will be let it die. Let is die. Whatever. It's a comment. And um, we're going to do a distance check. So again, we're going to do the check sphere thing. So if physics.checksphere and from our transform.position position um, with a radius and our mask. So we'll add two variables for var radius, which is a float, and that'll be uh, probably a one, actually 0 0.5, and var um, mask, which is gonna be layer mask. Now, you guys remember from the last one, I did set this up for our main hero for dealing with things like uh, collisions with the floor. We're going to set it up now for our bullet for dealing with things like collisions with enemies. 
So our cube is going to be our public enemy num1. And we'll do number 01 <laughs> just because it's going to make it easier. OK, public enemy number 1 is being a little dick over here. And uh, we want to stop him from doing that. So um, what we can do is select our bullet, our projectile, and our mask, we can have it only looking for enemies. Now I know last time I had to do this everything and then unselect enemies, but that's because I foolishly put, I made the hero a ground and not the ground. And then between lessons, I actually switched it so that our, oh, well, anyway, so that our ground was our ground and our hero is back to default and now everything was working the way it should. Um, yeah, here actually nothing and ground should be the only thing we're actually masking to. Okay, and we'll just apply that to our prefab. And our projectile is looking for enemies only with a small radius 0.5. So if we find an enemy, it's going to uh, just destroy itself. Oops, I wanted to copy that, not paste it. Um, and we can actually watch this in action. So this is an enemy. All right, cool. So now we should see when we shoot at this guy, if we can shoot directly at him, and if we can't, it's not, uh, it's not so good. Well, that is how it works, but it's not working. And I think why it's not working is because this radius is looking for a difference, a distance difference of 0.5 <clears throat> but because this center of the center of object of this is way up here um, our character or our, our bullets never actually get close enough to up here because they're always constrained to down here so we can just check that and see if that's what really is the issue by just moving this so that it'd be a little bit more equal in placement and let's just turn this guy around And it looks like that might not have been the problem. So um, let's check something else. Projectile. Let's turn our radius up to like three. I don't know why he's spinning, <laughs> but that's always fun. All right. So that's not working either. Let's put this to back to 0.5 oops 0.5 so let's see we must have messed something up here radius um, physics check sphere transforms position which is constantly updating it's checking for the radius and if it finds it it destroys it okay so yeah everything seems like it's fine so it's gonna be something stupid debug.log hit the enemy Yikes, not the enemy applications, whatever, whatever that nonsense was. Public enemy number one, he's on layer enemy. Projectiles looking for enemies only. Hmm. Oh, did I not save it? Wouldn't that be amazing? No, I saved it. I had to have saved it. Otherwise, it wouldn't, we wouldn't even be here. Um, let's make our bullets radius big again. Let's just do something crazy. Uh, now it's not even coming out. Okay, well that's clearly working. Okay, great. Okay, so it is working. So you see, if it's within 10, 10 radius of this, uh, this character, then it's going off. Um, so we'll try one. And there we go. Okay, so now it is working. I think I just didn't save, maybe. Um, I don't know why. So again, 0.5 is where we wanted it, and 0.5 is where we shall have it. So now you can see this this bullet these bullets will go off like that, but as soon as they touch this enemy or get within 0.5 of him, then uh, then they break. And I, what I can do is actually then call upon the object that I'm breaking against, and uh, 
and, and have that object take some damage. Um, actually, I can. I guess I can set that up really fast. Well, no, that's actually gonna take a bit of time, and I kind of have to leave soon. Shoot. Okay, I got a little bit of time. Let's do this real fast. Um, we will create a script for the enemy really quickly. Uh, oh no, this is gonna be kind of a thing. How would I do this? Can I do this quickly? Target. No, okay. I'll do that on the next on the next time I stream because it's gonna it's gonna take a bit of doing. Um, all right, but anyway, so that's kind of really what I wanted to get in today is just a bit of rotation stuff, and uh, show you guys how to set up some instantiated projectiles and stuff like that. <clears throat> and you know you'll see that he does do this weird rotation thing at the end sometimes and that's just because we're using this transform look at we'll get that sorted out too um, I know that there's a way that I can uh, I can use the thing I want to use which is uh, all this good stuff and that'll like lock him into place but um, I also don't want to bore everybody to tears while I try to figure these things out but I think it's helpful in any case just to sort of see that nothing, you know, scripting doesn't, you don't just sit down and write something, like you don't write a game instantly. You know, it's, it's, it's adding things here and there, it's, it's constantly like tweaking and removing stuff and removing things and rewriting things and, you know, everything piles up on top of everything else. Um, and that's kind of how games come together. You, you start with the basics and then just modify. So. Uh, I hope that hopefully that encourages you guys to be like you know what I don't need to know everything right off the bat in order to make something you just you just gotta it's just like anything you start with broad strokes and then like chisel it away and keep on adding finer and finer levels of control and levels of detail and and then before you know it you've got you've got a game um, all right <clears throat> I'm gonna head out for the night but uh, Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll be uploading all these things to my YouTube channel. So go check that out at uh, Jukes55. It's going to eventually become Almighty Pixel. So I'm transferring everything into that uh, title. <clears throat> so thanks for being here. And uh, you guys can follow me next time. I'm going to keep on just making, making a thing here. Making a game. <laughs> all right, everybody. Bye.